In this module, we'll probe deeper into what HTML and CSS are, and then we'll see how they work together in an HTML document. As mentioned in the introductory video, HTML, or Hypertext Markup Language, is a language whose only purpose is to place content on the web page. This includes text, lists, tables, forms, and pictures. This is an example highlighting some HTML elements on the page. All of these elements are defined inside of the HTML file using what are called tags. An HTML tag creates a way to textually represent an element of an HTML page, such as the paragraph tag, which defines a paragraph, or the division tag, which defines a region. HTML tags almost always have to have a closing and opening pair. For example, if you want to create a paragraph, you can simply type an opening angle bracket, the letter or letters of the tag, such as P for paragraph, and then a closing angle bracket. This will be the opening tag. The closing tag looks nearly identical, except there is a slash inserted before the element name. So in this case, we would type opening angle bracket, slash, the letter P, and closing angle bracket. At first glance, HTML looks like nothing more than a bunch of text. Even though this example is nicely organized, first-time viewers will have a hard time being able to read it. However, once you see the way the HTML tags are laid out, it becomes much clearer. Let's take a look at the tags contained in this HTML document and their layout. An HTML page always has a doc type at the top of the file. The doc type, or document type declaration, tells the web browser what type of file it is about to read. In this case, we are setting the doc type to HTML5. From there, the HTML tag contains the two main page elements, the head and body tags. Then, the head and body contain their own child elements. While most of the tags come in pairs with separate opening and closing tags, certain tags, such as the image, break, and meta tags, don't need a separate closing tag. These tags are called self-closing tags. To complete these self-closing tags, a slash can be added before the closing angle bracket. An example of each is shown on screen. On the other hand, CSS, or cascading style sheets, focuses more on the design aspect of a page. This includes color, positioning, and size of an object on the web page. Groups of styles, or rules, are defined in the HTML page, which you'll then connect to the HTML tags using what are called selectors. Selectors provide ways of targeting certain elements on an HTML page to apply style to them. Some of the more visible CSS styled elements are highlighted on screen. There are three types of selectors. ID selectors, which are defined with a pound sign, class selectors, which are defined with a period, and tag selectors, which are defined by tag names. An example of each is shown on screen. Using a class selector will create a class. Classes are named references to a group of styles we define. They can be used numerous times throughout an HTML file. This is an example of how to create a class. We define the selector, then add the styles we want. Collectively, this is called a rule. Using an ID selector will create an ID rule. IDs are also references to a group of styles, but are meant to be unique. For example, the rule we defined on screen called footer is only going to be used once. Basically, any ID rule should not be used more than once. To avoid complication and since there is no huge advantage to using IDs, we will stick to only using classes for simplicity. The last selector is a tag selector. This can target tags directly, such as the P tag. This example selects every paragraph tag in the HTML page and applies the styles to it, even if other rules are applied to the tag. To use our class, we have to use an attribute. Attributes are added onto a tag and change the way the tag acts. They are always defined inside of the opening tag, and the value of the attribute should be surrounded by quotations. This is an example of how to use an attribute to set the class of a spam tag that just contains text. Anything inside of the tag will now use the styling defined in the new entry class. In the next video, we will jump right into making our very first web page.